So what is going on everybody? Fernando Silva here with another video and today we're going to take this iPad mini 6, yes the new iPad mini 6, and turn it into our desktop and see how well it works because this is rocking the new A15 Bionic so it's going to be Apple's most powerful chipset so far, at least from a single core standpoint, right? Not really the GPU and the multi-thread, but the most powerful one that they've, or their newest one, the A15 Bionic. And they added USB-C, which adds a bunch of new options, which includes adding accessories like an external display like I have behind me to make this your desktop computer. But without further ado, let's figure out exactly what we got going on with this iPad mini 6 as your main computer. Let's go. Okay, everybody. So as you can see, we have Mac OS currently running on this screen right here. It's plugged directly into my M1 MacBook Air. And what we're gonna see is actually how this iPad mini can run your desktop experience, right? And what I'm using right now is a 32 inch BenQ monitor with a actual speaker reel at the bottom. So I do have speakers built into the monitor, which is great. But so all I'm gonna do is actually just put this iPad down right here. We're gonna unplug this cable, plug it directly into the USB-C port. And that's what one of those new things that came to this iPad mini, right? The ability to have a USB-C port to then again, populate a secondary monitor, which should populate in a second. And then here we have it. We have the USB-C port that's going directly from the monitor itself. Now again, you can use USB-C hubs and I'll link a few in the description below because I've used an abundance of USB-C hubs. You know, some good ones are by Bridge, the Stone 2, then you have an Andobil one, which is more of an on-the-go one. But this one, I like this monitor because it has a USB-C port directly in that passes both audio and video. But here you have it. Now what I'm gonna do is switch my mouse over to the iPad Pro. We have the iPad Pro rocking. We have the keyboard ready to go. So I have my Statechi keyboard right here, if you guys can see it, with my Logitech MX Anywhere S2. And I do recommend using the Magic Trackpad. I do have one, but I'm not gonna pull it out right now because I kind of just wanna rock with the mouse today. But as you can see, here we have iPad OS 15 on our main monitor. And what I like about this monitor and this setup is that the monitor is a little bit more like the aspect ratio matches what the iPad mini is trying to do. So I believe the iPad Pro is a four by three aspect ratio, and I'm not 100% sure what the aspect ratio on the iPad mini is, but I do believe it's a little bit different, which also lowers and lessens those letterboxing. But here you can see that we can run Pretty much anything right so we can go in here you have safari on here so we'll go to espn and it works just like you would want you know your ipad if you're familiar with ipad os then you can easily run ipad os on a secondary monitor so here we have youtube on one side and here you can see my quick notes actually popping up and the reason my quick notes are popping up is because i have espn as a bookmark link so here you have your quick notes which are nice to have which you can move around you know you can minimize it and again keep in mind the ipad is still an ipad and it's still a touch screen so you, you can move it around, use a touch screen. If you have an Apple Pencil, by all means, you can use your Apple Pencil, which I have right here. And if I slap it on, so we have the Apple Pencil connected, which is nice, but we'll get out of the actual quick notes. But you can see that it does run pretty normally, right? You can go in here, you can go into YouTube. You know, you have all your slide over windows. If, again, if you're used to everything, then it's gonna work pretty seamlessly. So here you can have Spotify rocking. So, and then it goes to the side, bring it back, play a little, you know, a little Drake. And you can hear that it's coming through my monitor speakers. So that's one thing. If you are using an iPad mini with a secondary monitor, but you don't have built-in speakers into that monitor, you're going to have to come up with a Bluetooth solution. Because what happens is that it defaults to the monitor and there's no way to switch it back to the iPad mini to then use the iPad mini speakers, or at least nothing. I haven't seen anything personally that can make that happen. And I remember before I had this BenQ monitor, I dealt with that a lot. So I would use like HomePod mini to get my speakers done and things like that. But again, it works well. It works as advertised. I kind of like it in full screen. It's powerful enough to run because again, we're rocking the A15 Bionic. So everything that you can do on your iPhone and a lot of these other iPads, you can also do on this iPad mini because you have USB-C, you have the Apple Pencil, you have the A15 Bionic. It's amazing to have kind of so, so much power in such a small form factor. So overall, I've been really liking this experience, right? It's pretty easy to use. It's very familiar. Like for me, for instance, I'm a iPad OS user on a daily basis, very simple to use and I do, recommend using a magic trackpad because it is a little bit easier to navigate to go back home and things like that but again it works well you have your app library you know you can go to twitter see what's going on on twitter which is nice you know some new tweets what we got we hit 25 cents on dogecoin right that's kind of nice and then you also have lumafusion so lumafusion is my video editor of choice and stay tuned for my next video most likely we're probably going to edit this video and i'm going to make a video to see how well lumafusion works on the ipad mini as an on-the-go video editing you know rig for instance but again, here it is. And what's nice about kind of this stuff, so if I go to all photos, 
So I'll give you guys a little sneak peek into LumaFusion. So I'll create a new file, create a new project. We'll go into landscape, we'll add this. And what is nice about LumaFusion, for instance, LumaFusion is one of those applications that actually can take advantage of a secondary display. So if you press this little AirPlay button, the whole display becomes kind of like your viewfinder while you edit everything on the actual iPad mini. So you can kind of see everything that's going on, see how people were visualizing, see how the colors kind of translate. And then all you have to do to get out of there is press the little AirPlay button again, and then you're back to your entire timeline, be able to scrub through it, and it works. Again, it hasn't hiccuped at all. Like I've used cinematic mode, you know, 4K, 30 FPS, 4K, 60 FPS, and it has not hiccuped whatsoever. But one more thing that I did want to show you to up your kind of desktop-like experience with the iPad mini a little bit more is shift screen. So shift screen, if you guys have seen in the past, we actually did a giveaway with shift screen a couple weeks ago when it launched. So this is shift screen and shift screen kind of acts and creates your iOS and iPadOS device almost into like a very cool Chromebook, right? It allows you to go full screen. As you guys can see, we're edge to edge on this screen. There's no more letterboxing. So if I leave the app, we're back to the black bars on the side. But if I go back into shift screen, it takes up the entire screen, which is awesome. And now you have floating windows. So I have Safari open. This moves on its own. You know, I can go in here. It goes back to that normal and more traditional mouse cursor as opposed to the little circle that Apple has given us with iPadOS, but you can go on here, go to ESPN.com. It works with your keyboard. You can resize these windows, which is awesome. So I can come in here, make it a little bit smaller, move it over. I can use a scroll wheel. So here I'm using the actual scroll wheel to get through here. We have YouTube videos that are allowed to play. So if I play this, there I am with sound coming through and I can even go picture in picture. So if I press this button, it allows me to have a floating window of the actual video, which is so, so cool. So I can move this around and do whatever I need to. We have a calculator app that's built in, you know, you have web apps like Notion. And then what's beautiful about it is that on the iPad mini, you can see, yes, it's only mirroring what's happening on the iPad mini, but again, you have a full screen. And then if I scroll down, I'll zoom in to show you, it automatically goes back into the iPad OS system. You click on here and then you can add other windows. There's other applications, PDF readers, signing the Slack, like I said, the calculators in there, you know, your whole Google suite. You can video chat off of this while using the actual camera from the iPad through shift screen, which is cool. So again, open up a new browser. We're in here. Let's go to like Wikipedia if we want. So everything works perfectly. And again, it works like a Chromebook kind of experience, but a lot, I don't know, it's like something, it makes it more fun to use. It makes the iPad more fun to use. So. If I know that I'm just gonna be watching YouTube videos, scrolling the internet, maybe taking notes for another video or some research or something that I'm doing, and I'm gonna use shift screen because I get a lot more windows to work with. It's very, very stable, makes it more fun to use. And then on top of that, I can go into the iPad mini and multitask on the iPad mini. So if I wanna scroll through Twitter on the actual iPad itself, I can, but then also I'm still able to go ahead and use my secondary display however I want, right? So again, let's go to YouTube. I'm still scrolling Twitter and you can see that Twitter is not going onto the secondary display. It's staying in the iOS and iPadOS UI versus if you get out of here and you want to open up, let's say YouTube and then pull up, let's say Twitter, then you're in that slide overview. But if you go back into shift screen, let's get out of here, back into shift screen, you can see that we have Twitter on one side on the iPad and then shift screen on the left side of the iPad, but it's taking up the entire screen. So this has really helped kind of emphasize and make my iPad experience on the iPad mini or on the iPad Pro on any iPad for that matter, because as long as you can connect to a secondary display, your iPad, even your iPhone will be able to do this, which is very cool with shift screen. It just depends on what dongles you need. And the fact that we now have USB-C on the iPad mini makes that transition that much easier versus things like the iPad 9 and all the other iPhones. You need, you need a lightning to HDMI adapter, a lightning to USB-C adapter, those kind of things. But again, shift screen really does help bring up the experience a lot. But again, that is what you guys got going on with iPad mini as your main desktop, right? Because from a power standpoint, it works perfectly. From a power standpoint, it's gonna handle everything that you currently do on your iPad, just give you a better and bigger canvas to work with. So get yourself also a nice stand like this Satechi S1 Slim. You know, it moves up and down very easily. It's sturdy, you can move it around, it's portable. But again, the experience has been really, really fun using the iPad mini as a kind of desktop computer. But again, you can do this with any iPad that has a USB-C port. So it really just depends on if you want to be able to grab your iPad mini after and put it like in your pocket and be on the go, which is something that a lot of people want and think it's really cool. But that's going to do it for this view. Let's get out of here. Go to the normal one. So as everybody saw, yeah, this iPad mini can kind of handle itself. Honestly, if you plug it into the right monitor, get the right aspect ratio, and you still want to use iPad OS, 
by all means, this is gonna run perfectly, especially if you have the right peripherals, like a keyboard, the magic trackpad, a mouse, all that good stuff. Even like I said, the monitor behind me, which has built-in speakers to get around that issue of the speakers defaulting to the iPad mini and things like that. So depending on what you have around you and what you use iPad OS for, this could be your computer. So for $500, you could have a computer. Now, if you're gonna use it as a computer, I do recommend going with the 256 gigabyte model just in case, but you can get away with using this iPad mini as your computer if you're focused on iPad OS, iPad OS 15 and that kind of ecosystem. And then also, like I showed you with shift screen, it gives you this kind of like Chromebook like feeling of being able to use your entire monitor to use a lot of web applications, you know, scroll through PDFs, kind of watch some YouTube videos and things like that. So there are applications which will help with your experience using your iPad mini as your main computer. So overall, I think it's powerful enough. I think it's doable, especially if you're somebody like me who's already in the iPad OS world and they try to focus themselves fully on the iPad OS world. So this gets my recommendation as a computer if you know what you're getting yourself into. And if you just came on to watch this video to see if it was possible, thanks for watching. But that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, check out channel sponsor Paperlike, especially for the new iPad mini screen protectors that are coming out soon. Hit that pre-order everybody. But until next time, peace.